Hi, I'm Laura from Laura G Yoga, and this is going to be our yoga practice to work on the yama, the first yama, ahimsa. And this is a really special practice today because this is the very first video that I'm making in my tiny house. So this is obviously the kitchen of my tiny house. Um, this is just one half of it, and maybe next time I'll do a video on the other half. But um, for our practice, we're going to be working on opening the space in the front of the heart, opening the space in the back of the heart, and um, doing our movements in a way that really works well for our bodies. So if you have any kind of an injury or a condition that you know likes to act up sometimes, then just honoring that and knowing that you're not going to push yourself farther than your body wants you to go in any sort of pose. So um, just keeping that in mind and watching your thought process, especially when you're in an open class and there's a lot of people in the room and you'll see yourself looking at somebody else in their pose and thinking, well, they're going really deep in their forward bend. I can go really deep in my forward bend too. Or she's still holding that pose, so I'm gonna hold the pose even though I feel like I really need a break. Letting go of that kind of thought. There should be no comparison in your yoga practice because when we start comparison, when the ego starts to come in, that's when our poses and our practice can become harmful and can cause injuries. So a lot of drawing ahimsa into your practice is making sure that the practice, which is supposed to be so healthy and so good for us, doesn't move toward the end of becoming harmful. So we'll start out with our breath and our our mudra. First, we're going to bring the hands into heart center and let the spine reach up toward the ceiling. Seeing if it's easy for you to bring yourself into good posture with the shoulders down and back, the spine really long and lifted, or maybe you feel like there's resistance somewhere, there's tightness in the muscles or soreness noticing that feedback that your body is giving you. We'll start by tenting our knuckles out to the side, making this seed shape for the mantra, or for the mudra, and then opening the fingertips out into our lotus mudra. We connect to this feeling of openness, openness at the heart, so that we can freely give and freely receive compassion. Closing the fingertips, closing the palms. Releasing the hands down. So the breath that we're going to use for this practice, or the pranayama that we're going to start with, is our first version of Viloma, which is a punctuated inhale and a smooth exhale. So as you start to inhale, you're going to go about halfway first. Fill your lungs halfway up. Pause. Fill your lungs the rest of the way up. Smooth exhale. Try that again. Inhale halfway full. Inhale the second half. Pause at the top. Exhale smoothly to release. When you get to the top of the breath, you're noticing very carefully what the space at the top of the shoulders and the neck feels like. Because if we over inhale and we're trying to stretch the lungs too far, we'll start to tense up in the shoulders or tighten our neck muscles. So every time you take that breath, you're watching the top of the breath. And if you start to notice that happening, the next time that you go through the breath, go a little softer at the top. Don't go into that feeling of tension. Now if two inhales, comfortable for you, you can break that into three inhales. So inhale, bottom third, pause, inhale, middle third, pause, inhale all the way up, little hold at the top, exhale it out. So a couple more rounds of breath like that, inhale, 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 all the way full, exhale.
to your regular inhale and exhale. If you want to use a new jai breath with that, you can. But you want to start to feel, now that you have taken that Paloma breath to stretch the lungs out and increase that capacity, you've cleared out some of the tension in the muscles that we use to breathe and move the air in and out. So see if the breath is just smoother and it has more ease now. as we start to add movement in, we're going to have a much more effective movement. So we're going to roll the shoulders up and down the back. Just rolling the shoulders like this, we're always trying to train the shoulders to be down and back, fighting that tendency for them to creep up to the ears and gather tension. your breathing with that as you inhale, scooping the shoulders up, as you exhale, sweep them down and back. Then we'll take the hands out front and roll right over onto hands and knees, or you can swing your legs off to the side. Then we'll come over into table. Maybe giving yourself some padding for your knees. My floor's in here in this hard wood, so definitely need some padding for the knees. And we're going to exhale, drop the heart down to the floor, and let the hips stay up high. You might end up with the forehead or the chin resting on the floor. bottom of the armpits and through your upper back in between your shoulder blades that really stiff area of the upper back and take your exhale and drop yourself back into child's pose as you inhale open your right arm up to the ceiling wide fingers as you open pressing down gently into the left palm Swim that arm back down. Inhale, sweep the left arm open. Turn your gaze to look up at the hand. Exhale, swim that back down. We'll take one more like that on each side, opening the right. Sweeping it down. Opening the left. And bringing that down. Take your inhale to lift up into your table. And we're going to do the same sort of movement there. Inhale, open the right arm. A little more rotation through the spine, this version. Dropping the right hand down. Sweep the left arm open. And one more time each side. into hero pose. If hero pose aggravates your knees at all, this is the perfect space to practice ahimsa. You can just switch over and cross your legs into easy pose or any other seated pose that you feel like is comfortable for your hips or your knees. We'll take the fingers and interlace them to press the palms out. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Get really long through the spine. And sweep down behind the back, clasp the fingers, and roll yourself forward. Inhaling back up, sweeping the arms up, palms up to the ceiling. Exhale around, press the palms out. Inhaling for length, exhale the hands behind the back. 
back. And you can take a little lift there, draw the knuckles back, and let that wave down through the spine, dropping your head down. Inhale, waving up, sweeping the arms open. Fingers interlace, flip the palms up. Start to scoop from the lower belly as you press the palms away. Strong exhale. Facing the arms down. Let's take the palms of the hands into the heart. We'll open the fingers into our lotus mudra. Reminding ourselves to keep our heart open. And then we'll take our hasta vinyasa for this practice. And hasta vinyasa just means breath and movement of the hands. Hasta hand vinyasa is that pairing of breath and movement. As you sweep the arms back, lead back with the thumbs so that you get some space across the chest. Exhale, draw the palms together pull that into your heart. This is a really symbolic movement that I li like to use in my practice and in my teaching a lot because it encompasses this opening and sending things out into the world that you want to release and drawing things into your heart that you feel like you need to pull in. when you come back into the heart, opening into Lotus Mudra. Opening the fingers. And releasing the hands down. Now I'm going to swing my legs out and around to come into Sukhasana. Nice easy pose. And I have myself propped up on my blanket so that I can keep my lower back really lifted. And then we'll start out by sweeping the arms up. Drop your right hand down and slide over into a side bend. And every time you exhale, you're trying to anchor down into your left hip. And as you inhale, you're reaching out through your left fingertips. And we'll take the left hand to the back of the head. We're using this space to create more room through the front of the chest, through your armpit. You're reaching the point of your elbow right up to the ceiling and even slightly turning your gaze up. And we can start to gently roll this movement as long as that feels okay on your back. Inhale, opening the heart space. Exhale, rounding down into it, finding space at the back of your heart. The next time that you open the elbow up to the ceiling, we'll fan the left fingers up, and draw ourselves up into sitting. Now adding on to that sequence, we're going to take my right leg out into kind of a modified Janu. Bring the right arm to the inside of the right leg. Left arm sweeps back really wide fingers and then draw the arm over the head to create this graceful arch into your side bend. As soon as you take your inhale here, you're trying to make space through the chest and through the left side of your rib cage, trying to roll that back. Take the top hand, bring it to the back of your head, open even farther. Add a little gentle roll, closing the elbow down to the floor, inhale, opening it up. to start to feel what your back feels like. How are the muscles? Are they tight? Do you feel restricted anywhere? Is it nice and open and loose? The next time that the elbow opens up, we're going to fan the left fingers up to the ceiling. Sweep up into sitting. Join the hands of the heart. Draw the right foot in. house. 
have to be creative with my practice sometimes. Drop the left palm down, sweep the right arm over. Give yourself a few breaths to open into your side bend. That first breath in your pose is just gathering information. And the next few breaths are trying to open and deepen. It really takes several breaths in any pose for you to move toward the full expression. It doesn't happen right away. Drop the right hand to the back of the head. Let that position with the arm create this sense of space through the chest, through the armpit. And then we'll start to roll gently. Drop the point of the elbow forward. Open it up to the ceiling. inside of the left leg. Start with the right arm back and open. Start to sweep it over your head, creating this nice graceful arch and this reach out through the fingertips. As you inhale, create some space into the right side of the chest. Roll your right rib cage back. Even more space. As you exhale, roll down into it. Inhale, fill with breath to open up. practices today. Not getting stuck on wanting to do the poses deeper, wanting to be more flexible. Letting them be exactly what they are today, knowing that that's enough. Dropping the palms together, releasing the arms down, and then we're going to swing over. to hands and knees and we'll take our right foot and step that up in between the hands find your nice knee down lunge and with the knee down lunge be really careful that you get your foot up high enough square the ankle off right underneath your knee and we're going to take our arm sweep here with the right arm inhaling open how close you can even wrap underneath your leg. And this time, opening that up, bringing the hand to the back of your head. Let that drop down, and we'll inhale, come all the way up into your high lunge, sweeping your arms up. Interlace the fingers, reach up to the ceiling, 
As you exhale, round, press that out to the front. Inhale, release the hips forward, press the palms up. Dropping the hands down, finding yoga mudra behind your back, rolling down into knee down, humble warrior. Inhale, rolling up the body. Arms come up, interlace the fingers, press up to the palms. Scoop the lower belly in. Find that, find that roundness in your upper back. Space at the back of your heart. Space at the front of the heart. Release the hands down. Draw your right leg back. And we'll take the left leg up. Getting nice and comfortable in your lunge. Make sure that the distance between your feet is working for you, that you're getting a nice opening through your hips. And for this side, we'll start to sweep the left arm. Just inhaling, opening, exhaling, lowering the arm down, even wrapping around your leg. Very nice, loving movement towards yourself. Wrapping around the leg like you're hugging yourself. And then this time, as we come up, we bend the elbow, bring the hand to the back of the head. Keeping the breath smooth. This can be a bit of a challenging twist. And it feels more difficult to take your inhale when you're in a twist, so you really have to work for the in-breath. Open the left arm up, release it down, and we'll come up into Anjanayasana, into low lunge on this side, interlacing the fingers, palms up to the ceiling, press that forward, scoop the hips back, scoop the lower belly back, sweeping up, as the arms release down, clasp into yoga mudra, Find some lift with the hands. Roll yourself down into humble warrior. Inhale and coming up. Interlace the fingers, press the palms up. As the palms come forward, scoop your lower belly in. Round through the upper back. Back of the heart is open. Inhale, lengthening that up, and the arms come back. Release the hands down, taking your left knee back, walking the hands out front, and dropping yourself down into Anahata Asana, or Playful Puppy Pose. As you exhale, drop yourself back. Find something to rest your forehead on. You can rest your forehead on your hands or on the floor. Taking your inhale, come up into your comfortable seat, whether that is hero pose or if it's sukhasana, whatever you feel more comfortable with. We'll inhale. The arms up. Exhale round and scoop the belly back. Inhale up. Release the arms. Clasping into yoga mudra, rolling the spine down. As you're in child's pose with the arms lifted, start to roll your arms from side to side. If 
Release your arms down. Come up into seated. And we'll take one more round with our Lotus Mudra. Feeling that openness at the heart. Being open to helping others, to giving your assistance where needed. But also being open to receiving help when needed. Pressing the palms together. We'll tap the forehead. Lift up toward the ceiling. Back down to the forehead, to the heart and to the floor. That was our practice for the heart chakra and to draw in a sense of ahimsa or nonviolence and non-harm to ourselves and to all others. So I hope that you carry this feeling with you as you come off of your mat and go about everything in your day. Try to hold on to this feeling of ahimsa and work on making it a part of everything that you think, everything that you do, and each decision that you make during the day. Namaste, thank you.